This problem has a little bit different instructions than the ones we've done before. This time we're not given an interval. It just says find the extreme value of this and where it occurs. Okay, so this time what we have to do is find the critical numbers and then we have to kind of analyze the graph and see what the absolute highest and lowest points are going to be and if we have any relative min and max. First thing we do is always got to do a derivative for all these kind of problems no matter what, so let's start with that. Now, before I do the derivative, let me rewrite this so I can apply the chain rule instead. Instead of using the quotient rule, I'll write that problem this way. Okay, I'll write that to the negative one power. To do the derivative, bring down negative one, I get negative two, x squared minus one, subtract one from the power, I get negative two, but don't forget to multiply by the derivative of the inside and derivative of the inside is going to be 2x. Let's rewrite this. Negative 2 and 2 is negative 4. On the bottom I get x squared minus 1 squared, the x there. Okay, so this is going to be rewriting it, we'll get this. So, we need to take a look at what the critical values are going to be. The first thing we can do is set the derivative equal to 0. And if we do that, if we cross multiply, we'll get 0 equals negative 4x. So that means that I get x is equal to 0. So x equals 0 is going to be one of my critical numbers. Now, let's see what else we have going on here. The, you'll also find a critical number where the derivative is undefined. We look at what makes the bottom zero, because if I divide by a zero, that's a place where it's going to be undefined. I notice that at one and negative one, that's going to make the derivative undefined. However, in order for it to be a critical number, it has to be defined on the original one. So since one and negative one are also undefined on this one as well, that means that zero is going to be the only critical number. So this right here, this would be the critical number. In fact, that's the only critical number that we have is x is equal to zero. Now, I know that one and negative one, these are actually going to be vertical asymptotes. What happens at a vertical asymptote? Well, we have this thing happening. We have the value here, and then the, it's going to go all the way down to negative infinity, and it's going to go all the way up to positive infinity. What's that going to tell us? Um, so we're gonna, we can say because let me write this out, because of asymptotes, no absolute max or min. Okay, there's no absolute max or min here. Why? Because again, if you look at this right here, this is your, if the dotted line represents the vertical asymptote, again, the graph goes all the way down to negative infinity, goes all the way up to positive infinity. Infinity is not an exact number, so we're never actually going to reach a point where it's the highest possible value. You can always keep going beyond that. So that's why this one, there's no absolute max or min. Now, what I want to look at, though, is I want to look at what's going to be happening at the value of x is equal to 0. So I want to analyze what the graph is doing at that point. So I'm going to look at x and f of x, and I'm going to make a table here. Now I'm going to test some values that are very, very close to zero. So maybe I might want to try negative 0.5, I'll do zero, and then I'm going to do a 0.5. And you can get closer to that if you want to use 0.1, a negative 0.1, that's okay. I just want to check to see what's happening around the zero so I can determine whether this here is going to be a relative max, relative min. So that's all I can really have on this one is, is that kind of thing, a max or a min. So I'm going to make a table of values and put that in. So, of course, if I put, I'm putting this into the original one. If I put zero into the original one, I'm going to get negative two. I'm going to test each of these and put that in there. This I'll get about negative uh, 2.67. This other one over here, I also get negative 2.67. All right, so what that means here is this number is lower, it goes up to a higher number, and then it goes back down again. So what's happening here is we see 
that there's going to be, and it's kind of, it's we have a lower values down here and then a higher value there. That tells me that the graph is doing something like this. So therefore, if it says to find the extreme value, what we're going to say here is you're going to have a local min or relative min of negative two, and that's going to occur at the value of x is equal to zero. So let's write that out. Now these kind of problems that you'll be doing online, you're going to have a multiple choice option on it. So they'll probably be one of these that will be chosen for you there. You can just choose that one. But basically you would say the relative or local, you say local on this one, it's a max. It's a local max because we know it's going up and going down. Local max is, and you'll say the y value, negative two, and that's going to occur at x is equal to zero. So this would be your answer. So again, this problem, you had to analyze it a little bit more to see whether you have an absolute min or max or relative min or max. In this case, there's no absolute min or max. All we have is a, a relative or a local max at uh, x equals zero and the actual value is negative two.